everybody, welcome to a Mike Talk on a Friday morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Already had some coffee this morning, already been in a walk. Uh, by the time you're watching this, I'm heading back home. We're on our way back home. So looking forward to Sunday, being at the Chateau at 9 and 1030. Looking forward to preaching this sermon that I wrote on the airplane last night. A lot of it, first uh, draft anyway. So many cool things. God continues to bless through all this. You're continuing to pray for us and pray with us at 149, and I'm continuing to pray for you. Text prayer to that number on the screen, and I'll be glad to pray for you. God's doing amazing things. I have so much to share. Probably update you a little bit tomorrow, but probably more so uh, at church on Sunday, if you're local, and then uh, online on Monday. Again, uh, God bless you guys. Hope you guys are doing good. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 here in just a moment as we continue talking about the Holy Spirit. But one thing that I'm really excited about um, and you can be praying about this. This coming Monday, I'm going to make an offer on this building. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that in just a, uh, in a couple of days. But um, the thing I'm excited about is that we get to do more programming that we think is important. And when we get this building, we get to do more outreach. We get to serve people in our neighborhood around, meet, see the need, meet the need, in Jesus' name. We're going to be able to do more children's programming. We're going to be able to do youth programming, young adult programming. And uh, that leads me to this announcement. I want you guys to know, uh, mark your calendars right now, so because... Um, our youth uh, coaches are sponsoring a back-to-school uh, bowling at Pheasant Lanes on August 10th at 10 a.m. August 10th, 10 a.m., it's a Saturday, um, and you can uh, be a part of just this growing youth ministry that we have going. We had a pool party already. We have bowling. Uh, you can go to um, songandsword.com slash point one forty nine, and that's where you'll find the information, and you can sign up there. You'll be hearing more about this, but I hope that you'll take uh, your kids, or if you have uh, grandkids who are students and they want to be a part of this, it's going to be an awesome ministry. And I can't wait till we get a building that we can have more regular events in. But we got that bowling thing going on uh, August 10th at 10 a.m. Uh, today we're going to come to Matthew 12, and probably one of the most questioned scriptures that there is. People have asked me this question about this scripture um, all the way through my ministry. Let me read what Jesus says, and then... Um, then we'll talk about it, this deep theology. But here we are in the Word of God today. This is what we do at Song and Sword. Um, 1231 says, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, even, either in this age or in the age to come. There is, it seems to be from the words of Jesus Christ, an unforgivable sin, and that is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which means uh, that you and I should be intensely um, uh, concerned and wondering what in the world is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. First of all, this is what I want to say about the Holy Spirit. It's obvious, he's obviously very serious business. If Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus says, listen, you can speak against uh, the Son of Man. You can speak against Jesus. You can say uh, blasphemous stuff against Jesus. And, um, and you're not, uh, not going to face an unforgivable sin. But, but if you speak against the Holy Spirit of God, you blaspheme. That word blasphemos uh, in the Greek language simply means to, to make something holy unholy. To, to make something uh, that's really holy, common, or even evil. You're switching the identity of the Holy Spirit. And the context of this is that the, the, the people that are Jesus' adversaries in, in Matthew chapter 12, you can read from verse 22 on down, they're saying to Him, you're casting out demons by the power of Satan. So, so we, we're getting a little bit of a taste of what it means to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Jesus is doing miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit, and they're saying it's the power of Satan. So in other words, they're making the Holy Spirit the same as Satan. Um, and so what do we do with that? What, what is, they're, they're obviously blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Well, there's a couple of things I want to assure you with today. If you're a follower of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. Um, I had a professor in college one time said, if you're concerned about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit. <laughs> It's not going to be just some cross word or one bad day. Um, it, is, it is actually attributing the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit 
to Satan or to evil forces. To be so misaligned with God that you, that you actually think that the power that's in you or that's in the people around you, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's evil forces. And um, against, again, that's an affront to God and to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit. And so blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is um, an, an attitude and uh, a spirit of disbelief in God and also a spirit of belief in the power of Satan to do great things. If you're in a position, and many in this world are, where they're thinking Satan's more powerful than God, in fact, the power that I see in my life is satanic, then you're probably a follower, a worshiper of Satan, and you're more inclined to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God that lives in us. And if there's a miracle in your life, and we've seen several in the last several months here at Song and Sword, when there's a miracle in your life, you attribute it to the power in your life. His name is the Holy Spirit of God. And to blaspheme that, would be to make it unholy. So here's, a, here's an easy thing to do today on Friday as you um, eat your cinnamon roll. Don't worry about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You know, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is obvious. You attribute something evil uh, to the great um, Spirit that lives inside of us, the Spirit of God. And uh, you're not going to do that today. So as you're enjoying your cinnamon roll and your coffee or whatever you're doing today, um, just be glad that you have the power of the Holy Spirit greater than the power of Satan and uh, you won't blaspheme him today. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you soon.